I mean, that's true as well. It was actually probably the happiest year of my life, that year of German occupation. For me, it was a very positive experience. It's a, a strange thing, you know, because you see incredible suffering around you, and, and in fact, you are, you are in considerable danger uh, yourself. But you, you're 14 years old and you don't believe that it can actually touch you. You have a belief in yourself, your belief in your father. It's a very uh, happy-making, exhilarating experience. So the leftists are controlled by a Nazi collaborator, and the family that says they've got the delegates and don't care if Donald Trump or Rand Paul or Ted Cruz get them, Donald Trump has you know, talked about this. Jeb Bush has told CNN and others, I am not going to let Trump do this. He will not get the nomination, even if he gets the votes. We can show you those quotes and clips from CNN. You're a tough guy, Jeb. And, it's, and we need to have a leader that is <laughs> real tough. You're never going to be president of the United States tough, by insulting yeah. your way to well, the let's presidency. Let's see, I'm at 42 and you're at three. So, Doesn't so matter. far I'm doing better. Doesn't matter. So far I'm doing better. He talks about the border and I saw it and I was witness to it and so was everyone else and I was standing there. They come across as an act of love. He's saying the same thing right now with radical Islam. And we can't have that in our country. It just won't work. We need strength. Governor uh, Bush. Donald, uh, you're not going to be able to insult your way to the presidency. That's not going to happen. And I do have the strength. So you have to understand, this is a very hardcore organization. And the Nazi money is estimated, uh, if you read into these reports, in the trillions in current money, hundreds of billions then, gold, diamonds, artwork, wired money, businesses that the Nazis invested in in Mexico uh, and in uh, the rest of Central and South America. And again, Mexico had a big German relationship in World War I and World War II. Mexico uh, got intelligence for the Germans and launched attacks on Texas and other states during World War I. Now, again, the West started World War I. I'm not demonizing the Mexicans for that. It's just you need to understand there's a major German influence uh, in Mexico because the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, uh, which is Germanic, ran Mexico for about 30 years or so. You just look into Maximilian and the rest of it, they finally killed him. So you have to understand that this is a very serious situation. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world and it's called shilajit and it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago as a matter of fact this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite thousands of years ago up in the himalayan mountains and in tibet and we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple years but we couldn't get an organic form right i mean so I, let's explain i mean we, this stuff's so good we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime- So it's almost like an oil up, from- Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're always claiming out. oil is really from decomposed a animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But So, so this is a true fossil uh, source? I mean, explain it to me. It is, uh, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over 7,000 different medicinal herbs and plants. And, it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and... And during the summertime and the pressures build it up, it oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. Infowarslife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> And I've given you the background. I've given you a lot of pieces to this. We don't know the amount of money they got, but the word from leaks, the word from sources, the word that's come out in some of these reports and skull and bones is the Bushes came from nowhere to be, you know, very close to the presidency, even in Prescott's time, and to having fabulous wealth and now 200,000 acre plus ranches in South America with military command bases and helicopter pads. Uh, because they really are like James Bond villains, and they really are dangerous. The whole fake, weak, Eddie Haskell, Mr. Nice Guy uh, thing that you see Jeb Bush putting on is just that, is a total act, and Donald Trump needs to understand there's a reason Ross Perot dropped out and said the Bushes have threatened to basically kill my family. It's because that's what they did. I'm here in Texas. Again, I have the inside baseball, but that all came out at the time. And, and, and Trump needs to know he is up against some very serious people whenever Jeb looks at him and says, you're not going to be president. You understand that? People need to know who these folks are. It's a big scandal when it turns out the Queen of England was a Nazi and, and her uncle was. Well, it's a big scandal here that it's never really come out in U.S. press like it should and hasn't been investigated that the head lawyer for the Nazis, I mean, the very head one, who they admitted squirrel all the money away, and, and who was used at the end of World War II to bring the Nazis in to fight the Russians and then help them hide their money that made a lot of U.S. officials rich. So this is this grafting on of the Nazis into American culture and why we see so many of these fascist tactics out of the bushes. I mean, I don't know the pros and cons of this because I just can't support either one. So sure, Ted Cruz may not be perfect, Donald Trump, Rand Paul, I know who the Bushes are. I've been an investigative reporter and a journalist for 35 years. I've worked in every major media market in the United States, and I've written for more than 100 newspapers and magazines nationally and internationally. So last September 17th, I became the first journalist in U.S. history to go to the U.S. National Archives and the Library of Congress and pour over the thousands of pages of documents in both places to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt or any refutation of the facts that Prescott Bush, the grandfather of George W. Bush, and George Herbert Walker, his maternal great-grandfather for whom his daddy is named, were Nazi traitors to the country who should have been tried for treason. Prescott Bush was the grandfather of George W. Bush and the father of George Herbert Walker Bush, and George Herbert Walker Bush is named for his father-in-law, George Herbert Walker. Prescott Bush graduated from Yale in 1917 and was in Skull and Bones with E. Roland Harriman, who was the younger brother of W. Averill Harriman. The Bush family really had nothing going. They were essentially social climbers and opportunistic people. At the time that Prescott Bush met Dorothy Walker, he was a tire salesman. And George Herbert Walker, as all fathers do when their daughter's going to marry someone, uh, said, 
in his heart, you know, it, it's, not a, it's not an appropriate thing socially that my daughter marry a tire salesman. So he brought Prescott Bush first into Brown Brothers Harriman and then Union Banking Corporation. Uh, in actuality, it was anything but a bank. It was essentially a Nazi money laundering operation that had a lot of tentacles into a lot of different other businesses. They owned a, a shipping line called Hamburg American Line, for example, which was the first Nazi front business seized, although the line was no longer operational in 1942. In the early 1930s, it transported Nazi spies into the U.S., and then their promotional ads offered cash rewards to any American citizens who would go back on Hamburg American lines and proselytize for Hitler. Eight months after the U.S. had entered the war, the New York uh, Herald Tribune ran a front page article, Hitler's Angel has three million in U.S. Bank. And it caused a major scandal and just rocked the world of politics. Brown Brothers Harriman, which George Herbert Walker and Prescott Bush were affiliated with and partners in, uh, worked with I.G. Farben, which operated Auschwitz. Prescott Bush he did a number of things that were not only anti-American but were pro-Hitler and he did all that he could to proselytize for Hitler and the rise of his Third Reich because the largest client, Fritz Thiessen, of his patron, W. Averill Harriman, dictated what kind of behavior he would practice to enhance his own career. So he was put on the board of directors of Union Banking Corporation and he was also a shareholder in Union Banking Corporation along with E. Roland Harriman. But what's interesting about what the documents show is that they clearly state that all of the shareholders were phantom shareholders for Fitz Thiessen and did his bidding directly. So the point I'm making is it's not as if they bought these shares of stock as a passive investment to hopefully profit from the war. They were directly doing the bidding of the individual who built the Nazi war machine. Uh, some very shocking documents that I saw at the Library of Congress uh, two weeks ago on August 10th, uh, on August 9th, excuse me, had to do with the hearings of the McCormick-Dickstein Committee of November 1934, show that Prescott Bush and the uh, DuPont family, the Remington family, and J.P. Morgan tried to overthrow the U.S. government, assassinate FDR, and put a Hitler-style fascist state in place. I have in my possession testimony from the McCormick-Dickstein Committee in November of 1934 by one of the fascist plotters that they were going to follow Hitler's model exactly and impose martial law on the United States, round up unemployed people that were worthless to the economy and troublemakers and Jews and put them into internment camps. And their plan was, if necessary, to exterminate the people that could not be part of the effort the only reason the coup attempt in 1934 didn't succeed is that they led, they hired the wrong general to lead it, General Smedley Butler, the great Marine hero, two-time Congressional Medal of Honor winner, who worked with the plotters just long enough to be able to identify who they were and then blew the whistle on them to Congress. Incredibly, after being warned by the FBI and the Justice Department and the Treasury Department to cease and desist in their Nazi dealings, they had continued them until 1951. There had been 28 additional seizures of Nazi assets and Nazi business fronts between late 1942 and 1951, and that they had moved Nazi assets into Switzerland, Brazil, Argentina, and Panama, and they had continued to do business with their primary Nazi patron, who was Fritz Thiessen, who backed Hitler beginning in 1921, and who was the wealthiest man in Germany, and a steel and coal baron, who with his partner, Friedrich Flick, essentially built the Nazi war machine along with I.G. Farben. In 1951, when uh, Fritz Thiessen died in Argentina, Union Banking Corporation was liquidated by the U.S. government and Prescott Bush received $1.5 million for his holdings in his Nazi business and that was the beginning of the Bush family fortune for all intents and purposes. Schwarzenegger is the son of a Nazi. He has praised Nazis. He has praised Hitler. He talked last night in terms like, we will not falter, we will not waver, we will win this war on terror. He's a leader who doesn't flinch, who doesn't waver, and does not back down. 
Well, that's exactly the speeches that Hitler made after the Reichstag fire. Terrorism and the homeland being under attack are precisely 